Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here. And today we have to talk about the situation in Ukraine because that invasion has already begun. Now, here's what I'm talking about. And I've got a lot of notes here and research and all of that. But I want to say that there has been this uh, basically perception since the beginning of time that to stage an invasion, you essentially roll in with some kind of army, military presence, take over stuff. And that is definitely part of an invasion. But now in the technological age, the invasion starts before troops actually enter the border thanks to cyber attacks. That's what we're going to be talking about today. But first, I want to give you up-to-date stuff on what is actually happening uh, today. Now, this uh, basically will come out tomorrow on the 22nd. And according to an intelligence report, uh, by, by basically from a speech of one of um, Putin's deputies, they mentioned on December 27th that February 22nd would be the day of the invasion. Essentially, that the new policy would be felt uh, by Russia's, essentially Russia's new policy would be felt 4 a.m., I assume, Moscow time. Um, uh, basically on the 22nd of February. And so we are all bracing for impact. And as I am talking to you here, tanks may already be rolling. I recorded this on Monday, um, not Tuesday, because I am traveling. So there you go. But as of today, Monday, here's what's going on. Putin, uh, or excuse me, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin has told the leaders of France and Germany that he plans to recognize two separatist regions in eastern Ukraine as independent and there you go. In a statement, the Kremlin said that uh, Vladimir Putin will sign a decree recognizing Luhansk and Donsk uh, very shortly. And so that is essentially happening today. And once that happens, essentially what the understanding is going to be is those become free. And because they have very heavy ru uh, Russian populations, they are separatists to Ukraine. They will open, uh, basically with open arms, welcome the Russian military into Ukraine. That's what's going on. But before that happened, uh, essentially the Russian intelligence agencies and cyber attackers have been incredibly busy in Ukraine causing disruption. Here's what's going on. The Ministry of Defense and Armed Forces of Ukraine, as well as state-owned bank, Privat Bank, which is Ukraine's largest bank, and Oshahad Bank, and I I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, were hit by distributed denial of service attacks a few days ago. The website of the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense was also taken down by a wave of denial of service attacks as well. And while the website of the Oshad Bank um, initially remained inaccessible, the customers were not able to access their online banking accounts. And basically, as I'm sitting here talking to you, the website of that financial institution was not reachable. I believe it has been restored since then, so this happened a few days ago, but this is essentially leading up to this invasion. Now, the threat actors also hit Privat Bank and defaced its website. The Ukrainian Center for Strategic Communications and Information Security also published a post on Facebook explaining that the clients of Privat Bank <clears throat> were not able to perform payments. However, the threat actors did not actually steal funds from their bank accounts. Now, about two days ago or so, the security service of uh, Ukraine, or known as the SSU, revealed that the country is the target of an ongoing, quote, wave of hybrid warfare conducted by Russia-linked malicious actors. Threat actors uh, aim at destabilizing the social, essentially the social construct and fabric of the country, instilling fear and untrust in the government. And here we are. So that leads us up to today with this new news. Now, the goal in any war, especially if you're going to be launching an invasion, is an attempt to make your opponent as deaf and blind as you can so they cannot coordinate or or they rather will become disoriented as well. All these kinds of things. Uh, essentially, Russian hackers did a dry run of this in 2014 when they knocked out a nuclear power plant in Ukraine and then hit the phone systems. So essentially, about a region of 80,000 people had no lights, uh, you know, no electricity. The phones didn't work. They were deaf and blind. And so so we are essentially waiting for that. And again, as you are sitting here listening to this, and this will be published first thing in the morning per the schedule, um, you know, for that day, we may already see uh, essentially tanks rolling into Ukraine. So I want to be clear again on when I publish this, but we've already seen the prelude of this. They are running cyber attacks. Um, also, intelligence agencies around the globe are looking at bombings recently, uh, specifically car bombings in Donsk, which is considered the capital um, of the basically Ukraine separatists that are pro-Russia. And intelligence agencies are believing that the Russians themselves are actually setting this off as a prelude 
to give support essentially to these regions and therefore uh, have the ability to essentially launch into Ukraine uh, with friendly regions, supporting them possibly as a first wave, and then maybe even take the capital. We'll see what happens. Nothing may happen, uh, you know, today, Tuesday, the 22nd, as I record here on Monday, but I just want to be absolutely clear and transparent on that. So this is a huge ongoing and evolving situation. Uh, my plan is to do videos on top of my normal daily videos on just the regular tech and cybersecurity stuff I do as we start to see the Ukraine situation evolve. But obviously, I'm going to focus on the cyber warfare side of things because I think it's really an interesting lesson on how to wage modern warfare. And here we are. So Russia's gearing up for that. We've seen waves of propaganda campaigns online, cyber attacks online to destabilize the country, the government, and all of that. And so the only thing I can say is people of Ukraine, please stay safe, as safe as possible. The world is with you. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please stay private. Thanks, guys.